Oh man, what is happening people? Hey, not bad for the first crappie of the day. Boom, good crappie right there. So I've came back in this cove here off the main channel and this is the first of May. And a lot of times, so the crappie have done a lot of spawning. So sometimes you come Back in these coves, you'll find there's actually a, a, some tree stuff under the water there. That's what that crappie came around. But you'll get these crappie and they'll be in the center of the coves. They'll pull off the banks and uh, they'll just be in the center of the cove waiting to move back up to spawn. Uh, you still got some fish that are going to spawn or haven't completely spawned. And so today I'm just going back in the coves. I'm looking around for fish, trying to figure out a pattern. Hey guys, stay with me. I hope you enjoyed the video. That's a nice one. Yes, sir. right there y'all. Woo doggy boy. Wildlife adventures, that's how we roll. <laughs> uh, so I'm gonna turn back around. Uh, somebody's mowing grass behind us. I hope you can hear me. I'm gonna turn back around. Uh, there's a few crappy left in this treetop right here. And uh, I am throwing a, uh, hadn't figured out quite what the fish want today. It is an overcast day. Uh, that is the dipstick color, straight tail, and uh, that's an eagle claw head. You see it has that eye on it. I like that combination. So let's turn around here and see if we can catch a fish. So basically right here to my right, there's the edge of a dock. There's some brush or something under the water there that these crappy are hanging on. I'm going to try to stay back from them, pitch over there, let the lure fall real slow. See if we can pick a crappie out of there. Flip the bail. Notice I'm gonna flip in there and I'm gonna just keep the rod tip high and attempt not to get hung in this stuff and just let the lure kind of float back out. Honestly, this is a good fish right here, y'all. Boy, that joke is wild right there. Honestly, I could get away with a, uh, this is a 16th, I could get away with a 32nd. These fish are shallower, boom, right there. And you notice he eat that, uh, he eat that Lake Country bait. Now you notice I'm not putting the spot lock on. I'm so close, it's so shallow right here. If I run the risk, that's a good fish right there. That's a good 11 and a quarter inch fish right there. I run the risk. If I put spot lock on, the wind's blowing up against this bank and pushing me away. If that trolling motor spins and blows that uh, current back through those fish, it, they're gonna be gone. Let's turn around here and catch another. Hey guys, when it's time for me to clean my boat, I rely on Better Boat products. They will help you keep your boat cleaner and keep it cleaner longer. Hey, look out for Better Boat products. Well, one about nine and a half inches. Uh, he really eat that, he really eat that bait. 
That's the dipstick color. I just chose that dipstick. I just looked at the water. It's got some stain in it. And, uh, you know, that, that dipstick and that LC Shad is a great color. And I might switch colors here. As a rule of thumb, as long as I'm catching fish on a particular color, I'll stick with it. When the bite slows down, you know, I've got multiple rods. I'll just reach and get another rod with a different color on it and run that color over it. Sometimes it makes a difference, sometimes it doesn't. Just a small fry. Another small one. Now they've allowed me to get pretty close, so now I can get, with the live scope, I can see that up underneath that work pontoon right there, there's something has fell off the bank and uh, down in the water. And, uh, you know, I'm just fishing around the tree limbs. It looks like the top of a tree has fell down. That being here, this water is uh, seven foot deep right here, shaded, makes an excellent place uh, for those crappy to hang out and spawn. And that's what these fish are doing to spawn it. And I know a lot of fish are out. I could go fish the bridges or fish some structure off. Uh, but I just wanted to make a point in this video today that you could still find fish back here in these coves. I did it last week. Uh, found fish uh, in the middle of the cove, kind of at the mouth of these little small coves, just kind of hanging out on the bottom. And, uh, you know, they pull off the bank and they're waiting to just move out, uh, you know, back to some deeper water. Well, look, I can see a limb right at the end, that right pontoon right there, right, right at the end, there's a limb sticking up in the water. And it seems to be... I want to pitch out just past that. Now I want to control the fall of this lure right here. I want to allow it to go down into the treetop. Now I can tell, I can tell that that lure is over top of a limb. If I pull that lure up right now, see this rod? I'm, I want a fish to bite it so I can get the fish over top of the limb. But if I pull, if I pull that lure up right now, I'm gonna get hung. Let's see if we can ease it up. So I can tell it's against it. I'm gonna just lift it up. I gotta pick up some more slack. Yep. So I got it to bounce right over top of it. it bounce right over top of it. I'm gonna lower it back down. And I'm just feeling for a bite. I don't have to look at the rod. I'm just feeling for a bite. Hoping maybe to entice one to uh, actually take the lure. Don't know if one will. So I'm good with that. So when you come up to a tree in the water, I can see the limb here. I'm trying really hard not to run this trolling motor. I will allow the wind to, to push me away from the tree and then I'll come back to it. So let's make another drop right out here into, uh, you know, right into the tree. Ah, I pulled right into the limb. I got I, one one hit it. Now you notice that method I did? You see what I did? It was hung. I grabbed the line, pulled it out like this, bowed the rod and let it go quick. That shoots that, uh, that shoots that line. It vibrates that line back down and a lot of times you can get loose. Now see, I didn't have to go over there. Thank goodness.
So I'll pitch over there. I'm trying to keep the lure up high. So if you get to a tree like this in the water, you really can't see. I, it's up against the limb again. And when I feel it get against the limb, I, I don't pull hard. Uh, hopefully, if it drops down over the limb, I could get a fish to bite it, and I, then it comes, and I don't get hung. See, it's hung now. Let's see if our shoot method, boom. See, it come loose again. That's what we need to happen. And usually that boogers the lure up. Just a little fry. So again, uh, I just caught that fish. Let me show you what I'm doing. So I'll use this, let me use this lure right here. So anyway, I have cast, I have cast over top of the limb. So I can tell that this is my line pulling against the limb and I, I can just look at the line and tell that it's over a limb. So a lot of times what I'll do, I'll just let the rod tip down and allow that lure to fall. I hope you can see it falling like this. And it gets down below the limb and sometimes you'll have a crappie come up and bite it. Well, if he bites it and you set the hook, well, of course you can get the crappie out from around the limb. If you just go to wind it or you jerk, you're gonna, <clears throat> you're gonna hang that limb. And we all gonna hang limbs, I just did it. You just saw me do it in the video a second ago. But that's just another method of way that you can work that jig through those limbs. And hopefully when you get it right up to the top of the limb, you can flick the rod and it'll come right over and drop right back down. Hopefully you get bit as soon as it hits the water. That's, that's what you're really hoping. I hope that helps you uh, fishing this brush. A lot of people are intimidated by throwing a crappy jig over the brush. They'll suspend a cork. Now, I could catch these fish under a cork. I choose not to. I could put a cork, slip cork on. It's uh, basically the fish are about five, four to five foot deep. I could put a cork on, flip it right over in the middle of it, let it down in the fish, and boom, catch these fish. But I'm gonna choose not to, because I'm getting ready to catch another fish right here. I'm gonna lower it down right there to the fish and uh, just jig it. You see, I'm not doing too much. I'm just holding it there. Oh, he think this one thought he was mean. He thought he weighed two pounds, but he didn't. Uh, just a little one. He's a keeper here. You know, it's a nine and a quarter inch crappy. We want to do that again. So the boat has drifted right over top of the brush right here. I am literally right over top of the brush. And see, I, I'm not doing, I'm not doing too much. I'm running my live scanner, of course, but I'm not. Uh, I'll have to run it here in a minute because I'm gonna be up against that boat. some reason I'm lowering it right down for some reason the wind puffed me the right right way and that's pushing me back see I'm just letting it right down in the water like this these are not big crappy big ones I'll be honest with you the big ones is probably behind the boat I probably spooked them out good gracious joke of wild Some of these guys, that's a good fish right here, y'all. That's a good crappy right there. Boom! Now, can I tell y'all a secret? I've never fished this cove at High Cove, ever. Never. Just came up the lake today. I said, you know what, I'm gonna do a little something different. And I'm gonna go in that cove right there and see if I can find some fish. Boom! See what you find when you go to looking around? Tell you what, since this lawnmower's right here, I'm gonna ease on. We're going somewhere else, guys. Stay with us. Ah, I 
I'd say that's a pretty good one right there. And I'm still back in this cove, and these fish were hanging off of uh, brush. That's that uh, slayer color with the chartreuse tail right there. And that's a good crappie right there, y'all. Boom. So I've been fishing this. Uh, you saw that nice crappie I just caught. I, I fished some laydowns back here in this cove and there were some small fish on the laydowns up in the brush. And so I just circled back around and I come past the tips of them. It was just scanning out there and it was a few nicer crappie like those uh, out away from the brush. So if you come back in these coves and you're looking, uh, you know, and like I said, the spawn is towards the end of almost post spawn but there's still a few crappie that need to finish spawning. So if you come back in here and you're looking, you looked along the bank line in the brush, saw some small fish, caught some small fish and turned, and then we come back out away from it about 20 yards and just scan where the water's deeper. And that's where I spotted those fish out there. Hey guys, we're getting ready to end this video. Uh, all in all, it's been a good day. We've caught a lot of fish today. And uh, I've just been going in these little small coves looking for some structure on, uh, you know, back in the back, there's still a few crappie still on some wood back in these little coves. And as a rule of thumb, I'll just add this. When I come back into, put that on spotlight. So as a rule of thumb, when I pick a cove, when I come off the main lake, I like to find the cove that has a steep side to it. It don't matter, both sides could be steep or one side. The reason for a lot of times on those steeper sides, there will be a treetop from straight line winds, a tornado, or whatever has fell in that water and will be out in the water column away from the bank where nobody can see. And those places are prime to catch crappie because people hadn't fished them to death, like a, like a beaver hut or a lay down that people can see coming into the water. A lot of times gets a lot of fishing pressure. So those places can be really ideal. And look in these little pockets. If you can see behind me, this little pocket here, it's got some structure in it. And these crappie will, if they postpone, they move back out. They'll get right out here on this first little drop off in this cove and they'll just kind of be right across the bottom, all gathered together right before they move out to the mouth of the cove. Anyway, I hope that helps you if you come to the lake. This is early part of May. Uh, fish are in transition, deep water, shallow water, still up against the bank, but if you like fishing for them close to the bank, you can still find some fish here. Uh, anyway, hope you've seen something in the video that you learned. Hope you've seen something in the video that you enjoy. Uh, please subscribe to the channel. Appreciate all the subscribers we get, and don't forget to leave a comment. Enjoy seeing all your comments. Remember, God is good all the time. All the time God is good. Don't forget, hit that like button and click that notification bell so you don't miss an episode of Wildlife Adventures. And as always, you remember, it's a wild life. And I'll see you on the water.